What's up, guys? Welcome back to Newswave. As we work towards the first half of June, which is when the PlayStation 5 reveal event is supposed to be based on rumors and speculation, we kind of expect to start hearing about accidental leaks and reveals, essentially, of games that could be there and maybe even games that come out alongside the PlayStation 5. Well, one company who is technically attached to Sony may have accidentally done just that. We're gonna go over what, I guess, was leaked out and the odds of it actually being real and at the event and maybe, maybe even coming out this year. Also, Google Stadia surprisingly made a move. It's not gonna sit great with Xbox One and PlayStation 4 users as they appear to have picked up a third-party game as a timed exclusive for Stadia and the original Xbox. It's actually gonna be going back online. No, seriously, by the end of this year, you could possibly be taking your original Xbox online and playing some of those original Xbox games with friends. As always, guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit the like button, helps out a ton. And if you're brand new here, hit that red subscribe button down below as we head towards 500,000 subscribers. And we're gonna start today with G2A because, uh, hey, it turns out some of those keys on G2A may really be fraudulent, I know. Shocker, hard to believe the $5 uh, Gears of War 5 key a week after the game came out wasn't legitimate. <laughs> well, G2A is of course been under fire for quite a while. It is basically a gray market where stolen credit cards can be used to buy up a ton of keys in one region and then resold in another all through G2A and it's had a serious effect on smaller developers who end up getting hit with chargebacks for those keys. Well, GTA, G2A put out the challenge that, uh, well, these keys aren't stolen. We'll even do an entire audit, and if they come back fraudulent, we'll pay any developer who wants to, or publisher who wants to pursue this 10 times the amount. Well, it looks like a publisher took them up on that, and, uh, Turns out the keys were, were stolen. And this was from Woob Software, who did take them up on the offer. No other developer or publisher seemed to, but they took up G2A on the offer, and after several months of, of auditing, it looks like several hundred keys were actually illegitimate. So what happens? Well, it looks like G2A really did pay out about $40,000 to Woob, and uh, that's, that's good for them, for Woob that is, but G2A didn't really seem to take any responsibility for it, and to be honest, it seems like G2A is gonna roll business as usual forward, but I mean, they just admitted that there are fraudulent keys on their website. So keep that in mind too, because they could also affect your purchases on that marketplace. Because if you get a key and it turns out that like a week or two later, like a Windows key maybe or something, uh, it turns out to be fraudulent, it'll just be useless at that point and they might even reverse it on you. Also, we heard a bit from Monolith Soft. Of course, we're working towards Xenoblade next week, which I'm gonna pick up and really enjoy as uh, the whole situation with GameStop in the original Wii version made it very difficult and frustrating and the new 3DS one I just wasn't really feeling, so I'm excited to check this one out that's next week, but people are also wondering what is Monolith Soft up to going forward here. It does look like they are working on a new title, Shocker, right, that Monolith Soft will be doing that, but we did get some inside in Famitsu as to how this all went down, where they said that they did take the project or the idea that they presented to Nintendo in May and started full production in August, which means that this was August of 2018, which means that uh, three years later, we could even see that project have a release date, maybe. They typically work in three to three and a half year dev cycles before we really start to make the push towards the final product. So so uh, I'm thinking we could possibly see it by the end of this year or even early next year. But uh, Xenoblade next week, uh, Monolith working with their new project, it's exciting stuff there. Also, a quick update for anyone trying to get their Nintendo systems repaired or maybe even look into the refurbished website to pick up a cheap refurbished Switch or 3DS or 2DS. And it looks like Nintendo is starting to reopen their repair facilities in the US, so you'll wanna keep an eye on that and maybe even check in with any current emails that you have for repair status and get back in contact with them or even check your inbox if you had a repair that was in process and 
had to be put on hold, obviously, because of the repair facilities being temporarily shut down with the pandemic and all of that going on in the world. Now, they should be resuming, it seems, different parts in the U.S., which means your repair is probably going to start back up in its progress. And as soon as those refurbished sites start reopening, you might want to double check because if you're still looking for a Switch, uh, Nintendo's refurbished stuff is pretty good and you can get one at a good value. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start with this PlayStation 5, what appears to be an accidental leak. Now, the PlayStation 5 event is most likely three to four weeks away and we're expecting to see mostly first party games, but there will be some third party games there that Sony has signed on with some exclusivity in mind. And there still might be like a few multi-platform games, but to be honest, I think Sony is looking to really show you why you should buy a PlayStation 5 specifically this holiday. And in order to do that, they gotta show us games that are only available on the PlayStation 5. We will still see some cross-gen games here. They're not just gonna leave the over 100 million uh, user base for the PlayStation 4 behind. It just doesn't make business sense. But one game that people have been curious about is another Gran Turismo. I've brought it up a couple of times because they've played around with tech demos already, showing high frequency frame rate versions of uh, Gran Turismo running at different times, ray tracing tech demos with cars, of course, because cars, generally these car games already look really, really good. So it makes the system look really, really good, right? We've seen it with Forza time and time again. Those tend to be the best looking games on the Xbox system. Same with Gran Turismo on the PlayStation system. So naturally to hear about possibly Gran Turismo 7 isn't super surprising, but check this out. This was an Instagram post you can see here from Next Level Racing, asking what racing game are you most looking forward to in 2020? And uh, well, that definitely looks like the Gran Turismo, a Gran Turismo logo with the number seven next to it. Now, Next Level Racing is an, is an official PlayStation licensee making very big and very expensive cockpits so players get a better simulation when playing driving games. This is according to the sixth axis. And that means that they are, of course, in the know, we'll say, with if there is a Gran Turismo 7 coming soon. If it's coming in 2020, naturally that means it would probably launch next to the PlayStation 5, which means it would have then been three years since Gran Turismo Sport and well, seven years since Gran Turismo 6. But I do think there is a strong possibility that Gran Turismo 7, let's just say that this is a thing that is happening because I do think, we'll say that, I think Gran Turismo will be at this event coming up in some capacity. It could be Gran Turismo Sport that is getting a patch and an update to make it look and even run better on the PlayStation 5 versus the PlayStation 4, or it could be a whole new game like Gran Turismo 7. Very, very possible. One thing's for sure, they'll wanna show off some sort of racing game that they can do things like high frame rate or even ray tracing just to show off the overall effects of the PlayStation 5, like, completely. So, to have a Gran Turismo game there isn't surprising necessarily, but uh, I have seen some Gran Turismo fans uh, unsure and even skeptical just because it usually takes a while for these Gran Turismo games to come out, specifically the numbered ones. That just seems to be from Polyphony Digital, just, I don't know, taking, they're, they're, I, I get they look at all the cars and they wanna be very detailed and almost perfectionist at times, and they try to put a bunch of cars in there and then a lot of them show up as DLC down the road as they go forward, but Gran Turismo being part of the PS5 would be a big deal at launch because then it can go, of course, against Forza Motorsport 8 that is pretty much gonna be there. We've already heard about this a few times now from Microsoft. I fully expect to see that game in July running on an Xbox Series X, and I think they will look for things like 120 frames per second. I've even toyed around with the idea of them maybe going for a lower frame rate, but even try for 8K with Forza 8. It sounds crazy, but uh, you never know with that one. It would be very interesting to see them just get 8K somewhere on the stage for a game, and a racing game makes sense. So naturally, 
I think you'd see Sony do something like that with Gran Turismo. Then when you know it, just a few hours after that original post went up and exploded online, they decided to take the original one down that was circulated and post something else on Instagram to try to correct the record. This is from Next Level Racing saying, our team has recognized that a recent post by us using a logo has been misinterpreted by media and it does not reflect any information from our end and we deny knowing any information regarding the launch of GT7. And they go on to say that the logo that they used was an image online that's kind of being circulated and passed around as kind of a mock-up of the Gran Turismo 7 logo. So at this point, it's either they accidentally leaked it and they got in trouble for it or they legitimately don't know if it's coming out and they just, for some reason, threw it in there. I don't know why they would. It seems very weird. But as we have been hearing more and more about a PS5 co event coming up, the good news is we won't have to wait much longer. I wouldn't be shocked to see Gran Turismo, I'll say, at the event in a couple of weeks. Whether it's Gran Turismo Sport or Gran Turismo 7 is the question now, but uh, either they slipped up or they legitimately don't know anything about it and they just, for some reason, threw it in there and, and then asked everyone if they were excited for Gran Turismo 7 coming out in 2020. All right, well, I guess we'll find out in a couple weeks. Next up, let's talk about the original Xbox and it playing online, possibly in 2020, and it seems to be definitely going into 2021, but this service shut down like a decade ago, I believe it was 2010. If I remember correctly, someone just left Halo 2 on, attempting to keep the servers up, and it was a whole thing but eventually that went down and so did the servers. So like we're just kind of left with the original Xbox, which introduced Xbox Live, unable to connect to Xbox Live. And I mean, all systems eventually go through this where the, where the service gets shut down so they can make room for the next big system. But what if it didn't have to be that way for the original Xbox? Well, well, check this out. This was a post made to Reddit yesterday and it actually talks about the idea of bringing back Xbox Live for the original Xbox. It is called Insignia, and it's a replacement for Xbox Live. Now, the idea here is that Insignia is a replacement server for the Xbox's online services and is currently in private development. And what's really interesting about this, as they describe in this post, you won't necessarily need a modded Xbox to do this. I know it's very popular to modify your Xbox and all that, but it does say that you'll have to have a way to dump keys, which you can do through, uh, of course, the very famous game exploits where you need like one of three different games to do it. it is Splinter Cell I know is very popular, or even Mech Assault, which, hey, if you bought Mech Assault to modify your Xbox, now we can even play it online. That's that's pretty cool. Now they're hoping to have games working by autumn 2020, and uh, I'm gonna see if we can check this out. I think it'd be a lot of fun to get some of the people from the Spawncast together. Definitely NVG, as this is like right up his alley for the original Xbox getting back online. But how cool is that? I'm trying to think of some games that I'd want to play. 13. Obviously Halo 2, although Halo 2 is on the uh, is on the Master Chief collection, but like Mech Assault, Chaos Theory. Yeah, Splinter Cell Chaos Theory, I'd be on that immediately. That'd be awesome. But uh, how fun is that? The original Xbox coming back online in 2020. That's, that's strange, isn't it? But uh, hey, look forward to that. Uh, there is a whole video of them even going on and signing up on Xbox Live with obviously fake details and all that, but it went through and they created their gamer tag on the original Xbox, signing up for Xbox Live in 2020. It's wild stuff. Next up, let's talk about Google Stadia. Of course, Google told us that they were gonna start making some moves and attempting to get some timed exclusives in order to try to push people towards Google Stadia. And then, of course, they also worked to open up the free service, the, well, the free service, you still have to buy the games, of course. And then they made the pro service free for a few months. And that was at least interesting for people to sign up in a browser to check the service out and even play some of the games through the pro service. But now they have to start figuring out how they're going to bring people in and the first move appears to be getting Sirius Sam 4 as a timed exclusive for the, the service. But what's interesting about this is previews of the game originally showed PlayStation 4 and Xbox One as the systems it was going to be coming to alongside of PC. Now, it does appear to still be going to PC and there's Devolver Digital doing this, but it looks like at least for 2020, it's going to be a Stadia exclusive, and I guess Stadia we just count as a console now, as they want to keep it off of the PS4 and the Xbox One for the remainder of this year. You'll be able to grab it there next year in 2021. And uh, yeah, I, I did some see some people 
frustrated by this decision to do this, but hey, Google went to them with, with some money and said, we need you to keep it off the other platforms and uh, Devolver Digital took it and kind of that's it. It's just, hey, we gotta wait seven or eight months if you want it on another platform like the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One for now. Otherwise, you'll have to grab it on the PC. It's gonna be coming out the same time, it seems, as Stadia in August 2020. So just a couple of months there, but uh, I don't think this is gonna be the last timed exclusive that Stadia does. They're not, at least I don't think, looking for anything massive, just more affordable things that they can kind of pad the library with. And in our last bit of news, as we kind of work through a year without E3, we're pretty much all looking for other places to find game announcements, right? Uh, the Summer Game Fest is going on, that's one. Nintendo seems to just drop random stuff on Twitter. Sony seems to just have blog posts that go up about PlayStation 5 accessories and parts, and who knows, maybe they'll tweet out the back of the system or the HDMI port or something at this point. It'll probably trend. Well, it looks like we're starting to see more and more third party publishers and developers kind of get together and we see another instance here where apparently we're gonna see New Game Plus Expo. They said announcing New Game Plus Expo, an online showcase of video game publishers and developers from around the world. You can watch exclusively on Twitch at their at their channel there on June 23rd, 8 a.m. Pacific time. So that'd be 11 a.m. Eastern. And they have several companies. I mean, look, Sega, Atlas, you see Natsumi, uh, Nice, Nice is down there, Nice America, yeah. Uh, Inti Creates, Koei Tecmo, SNK, Grasshopper. There's There are quite a few different uh, companies here and Atlas even retweeted it. So I kind of think Persona 5 Scramble maybe gets an announcement for a release date in the West. That would be pretty cool. Sega uh, could even show up with maybe something with Sonic. I think that'd be pretty big as well. But having these little events all online, by the way, so it'll probably just be trailers and maybe some sit downs with developers that are pre-recorded. That'd be pretty fun, but yeah, more things to look forward to at the end of June for a bunch of companies. Cross my finger for uh, Persona 5 Scramble and a new Sonic game. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This one's from Carl D saying, Gears of War series on PlayStation would have sold like hotcakes. And uh, I think if it was just on both, 360 PS3 would have sold better, obviously, because there's more people to sell to. But I, I really think that Gears of War obviously built up kind of the it, its overall franchise on a platform that was really enjoying shooters. So it made sense there, to be honest. I. I don't know if it would have done any better on the PlayStation 3, but Cliff Blazinski did take to Twitter and say that it was a mistake to put Lawbreakers on the PlayStation 4 over the Xbox One. And uh, you know, we'll never know obviously, but if you had done marketing like, oh, from the, the person who brought you Gears of War, bringing you a, new, a take on the hero shooter, here's Lawbreakers, maybe. I mean, Lawbreakers, I thought from what I saw, it got off to an all right start. It just fell off because people realized it was a pretty generic hero shooter. If Cliff really does come back, as he's alluded to on Twitter at times, even talked about getting that urge to make another game, I'd like to see him go back and do something a bit more creative, maybe get away from the straight up 3D arena style shooters, try something a bit more creative, go back to like, I had a Jazz Jackrabbit, Go do something more like that, a smaller indie style game, maybe even 2D, just have some fun with it, right? I mean, Contra's still popular. You could do a 2D kind of shooter, I, I don't know. Just something maybe less, maybe less hero shooter, less Radical Heights kind of game, right? Just do something a bit smaller, different even, and creative. I think it could be a lot of fun still. And ladies and gentlemen, let's go to it here for Newsway. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button, it really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about today, whether it's Google Stadia making a move and picking up a timed exclusive, even pulling it away from the Xbox One and the PS4 with Sirius Sam 4 coming out in August. Let me know what you think about that. And then what about Gran Turismo 7? that seems to have been leaked by a Sony partner. Uh, let me know if you think Gran Turismo is coming out this year and if it is a launch title for the PlayStation 5. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.